Hi guys, hugging around. How's it about doing it, hey guys? How about this guy's a real theater? A real stage? This is like a real deal, man. I know. All weekend long, we've been running around like ants. This is like <laughs> using all the space. Um, allow me to make this official. Minneapolis, Minnesota, and the surrounding counties, please, won't you welcome Jensen Ackles and Jared Patton. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I snapped my hamstring on that one. I know I did. I'm getting old. Oh. I was doing the uh, Michael Phelps warm up. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest. If I was on the blocks next to him, and pop, pop, what the? <laughs> I'm not racing that guy. <laughs> You're like, eh? I'm going. Yeah. Uh, I love you. Whoever you are. Yes. You. Yeah. Hi. How are you? It's great to be back. Um, how about Jeffrey D. Morgan there, huh? Old Papa Winchester. Finally get down to Atlanta and kill some zombies. Winchester style. Show them how it's done. Um, and whoa, I love whoa. you. Take it easy. <laughs> I, I sense like a Brexit happening. It's like, I love you, Jensen. No, I love you, Jared. Scratch, scratch, claw, bite. Um, we both love all of y'all, so just to be clear. Legitimately. Um, who, who's a first time or two? So far, so good? We like to say it's our wonderful, dysfunctional, and wonderfully dysfunctional family. So, um, we're happy to be a part of it, and happy that y'all are too. Um, How about these guys, huh? Yeah. Good stuff. Hey, Jared, why don't you tell us about your uh, bocce skills last night? <laughs> How much money did hell. you lose? <laughs> in pain to get the bocce court or in losing to you guys? <laughs> we really wanted to play bocce last night. We ended up at a Brits pub. And, we ended up at Brits pub. Yeah. and uh, one of my dear friends, uh, one of my groomsmen actually lives here in town. Um, and uh, we got together last night and we walked over and went upstairs and I was like, there's a giant outside bocce court? Uh, but they were packed up, and we tried to name drop ourselves, name drop our friends. It was like, I know Jennifer Love Hewitt. Uh, um, we, uh, they were like, get out. They are like, we, we ended up having to bribe two guys. <laughs> yeah, so we're standing there on the, we're standing there on the, uh, on the pitch, and um, we're talking to the person that's in charge of this. Is it a pitch? I don't know. How do you know the lingo? I don't, because you, you, you were like botching sharpening me last night. I did. I totally hustled them last night. Uh, so, so they're like, oh, there's a there's a, a, a waiting list uh, of people to get on to the to the field and stuff. And we're like, oh, all right. Well, we don't want to bump anybody off the list. Um, I did. And then, <laughs> but then there were these there were these two guys over on one of the courts there. They were just sitting there. They weren't even playing. And I'm like, I'm like, well, these guys are really playing. I'm like, hey, Jared, why don't you go over there and uh, maybe see if you can't bribe those guys off and let us take their spot. That way we're not but, actually bumping somebody. By Jared, we should go do this. He went like, hey, Jared, go walk over there and try and hand up some cash. And I was like, them? Okay. Uh. 
So, in, all, in all fairness, I worked till 3 a.m. So, like, and Uber time, so I was a little tired yesterday. So Jared walks over, he's walking over to the thing, we're, we're still back there, and he's talking to the guys, he's doing this, and then I see him go. <laughs> and then the two guys gleefully skip away. <laughs> and Jared just goes. <laughs> and so, but here's where it took a turn. So, so we, we get on the, we, we start playing. By the way, I think the first thought that occurred to me was like, yay, we get to play bocce. Instantly, the second thought occurred to me was like, I offered them too much because they didn't even negotiate. <laughs> they were like, you're gonna give you us want, a, you're yeah. gonna hundred bucks Have fun. to play bocce? All right. And then one of the guys was like, well, how much was it? 150. And the other guy was like, no, 100 is fine. Like, don't, don't scare them away. I want 100 bucks or something. <laughs> so, so they so they take off and then uh, and then we start playing and about 15 minutes goes by and the lady who's kind of in charge of the she walks up and she's like okay guys your hours up We're like what We're like yeah those guys only had it and it changes every hour I'm like so he just paid for 15 minutes <laughs> luckily the next group on the list uh, were no shows, so we ended up getting to stay on and, and play for uh, for a little while. And, and uh, way too long. And, Turns out uh, Jeffrey Dean and uh, Jensen are little botchy Olympians. Yep. It was the oldens versus the youngins last night, and the oldens prevailed. <laughs> they, did. they did. Yeah, rematch tonight. Uh, without further ado, let's. Uh, Let's get to some questions. Let's start with my side. All right. First of all, I was just wondering if I could get a J, Sir, J squared hub. And then also, you know, on the show, we had a supernatural convention through the books. And I'm just wondering, now that you guys are actually having supernatural conventions out through the TV show, how do you guys feel about that? Now that it's evolved to this. Well, the, the conventions actually came before the TV show. I mean, not... <laughs> <laughs> Figure that one out. It's supernatural. Um, Is this one of your riddles? Shush! Go. I love you. Go practice bocce or something. Don't don't make him feel better. This is. <laughs> Let him falter and flounder. Uh, no, I mean we did the convention episode season four, so we'd already done. We already started to learn kind of what conventions were all about. Um, but that, I mean, this, we, for those who haven't joined us before today, we often say that Supernatural, you know, obviously these conventions wouldn't exist without Supernatural, but Supernatural wouldn't exist without these conventions. So it's a chance for us to kind of meet people face to face and see who made this show last for 12 seasons. So thank you guys. <laughs> Thanks, Donna. There was a movie made about your life. Who would you cast to play yourself? The guy who was climbing the Trump Tower. <laughs> Meryl Streep. <laughs> she could do it. She could do anything. I joked, my agent texted me after I tweeted the picture of Bizarro Jar Pat. Um, and he was like, that's not you, right? And I was like, no, it's not me, I'm in Vancouver. And I was like, the good news is, if they ever make a documentary about the guy who climbed the Trump Tower, I know I get a job, so. <laughs> it's pretty funny. And then I saw it on CNN, I was so happy, I was like, hee hee hee. <laughs> I slammed open my trailer door and I was like, everybody, come here! Jensen's in a trailer next door, he's like, what? Like, Cliff and everybody is inside my trailer, I'm like, what? Hee hee. And it's like, and then they, they, they pick a photo of you where you're like... Oh, like doing the church lady or something. It's an awful photo. I took a picture. I'll, I'll tweet it. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a really horrific photo. of It was like one of those ones where you're yawning or something. So it's a picture of the Trump Tower guy and me like... I mean, super, super flattering. Um, but yeah, at least I'll have a job and this is all done. Um, thank you. Thank you. Hi. 
So back in May, Jewel State was on that exact stage, and she was asked about being Supernatural, and she went on to tell a story about running into you guys at a restaurant, and she said she came in, but she didn't want to interrupt you guys, so she just went to her table, and then she said, you guys came over and were like, hello, did you not see us? So I'm just wondering if you could kind of tell us your side of that story, where you're like, did she not see us? Why did she come over here? Just your side. You know what's funny is that, I I think a lot of, it's so bizarre sometimes because um, you meet somebody, you work with them, you enjoy them, you enjoy their work, but they don't feel, I think there's also like a mutual respect of, of entertainers and actors and musicians where, you know, if somebody's eating, you know you don't want to be interrupted while you're eating and so they don't want to interrupt you, but you certainly want to say hi and give a big hug or something. And so I think she was just, you know, she's a professional. She's been around for a long time and done some great work for a long, long time. And so I think we kind of were like, you know, maybe she saw us, maybe she didn't. But if she if she didn't see us, let's go say hi. If she did see us and she was just being uh, kind by not like, as we're in the middle of a big bite of food, interrupting us, so we decided to go and say hi. But she's rad. Uh, I wish she'd come back. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Hi. Um, I have a quick question first was within 48 hours of red meat, I watched it four times. I am so impressed that after 11 seasons, you could put something of that quality out. Jensen, you like broke me talking to Billy. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So my question is, if you did a follow-up to Changing Channels Now, what TV shows would you want to play? <laughs> the Walking Dead. The Walking Dead. <laughs> Script superhero because there's too many of them. <laughs> what, I, what was it? I was like uh, Game of Thrones. <laughs> no, we were we were doing some photo shoot um, on the Flash set, as some of you might know. <laughs> and also the Arrow set was right next door. It was they were saying it was a day of uh, it said it's a day of superheroes because it's also Legends of Tomorrow too. So it's a day of superheroes and real heroes. So, um, yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, Game of Thrones. Um, real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Real Housewives. <laughs> real Housewives of Sheboygan. <laughs> and the Olympic swimming trials. <laughs> Strap on that Speedo and let's go swim. It's, it's on, Jared. It's, <laughs> it's already on. It's hydrodynamic. Thank you. Gilmore Girls. <laughs> That's, they're actually parodying themselves right now. <laughs> Kardashian! I won't stoop that low. I... <laughs> I'm just kidding, Kim. I love you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Oh, okay. I know they're loud. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, what is your favorite part of being fathers? Spinning in my chair. <laughs> Acting like children. Jensen, ha ha. <laughs> Does anybody out there have twins or? Where are my twins out there? Where are my, where are my twin beings? Twins, twins, twin beings, <laughs> twins. Yeah. Awesome. Your parents. I'm about to feel your parents' pain. <laughs> uh, that is such a difficult, difficult question to answer. There's so many cool things. Um, There's the classic where they say, I love you, daddy, or, you know. Um, but one of the, it's a really weird responsibility. Um, but sometimes, my favorite part, 
right now, being a parent of two, my favorite is when I when I see my kids like telling each other secrets and laughing and playing, and it's almost like, oh my God, they're four and two, they're not ready to go out into the world. But you know, Jen and I will be there with Tom and Shep, and we'll be they'll interact with us, and then they'll with each other go play together or like be playing with toys together or telling secrets or laughing or giggling or wrestling or something. I'm like that's so cool. Like they're almost human beings. <laughs> But at first you're like, it's this little thing you don't want to break. And I'm a big guy, and I don't want to like break anything or mess them up. And then you see them play with each other, and you're like, you know what, they're going to be all right. Um, so that's my favorite, is seeing them interact. I had a moment the other day, um, I was carrying uh, JJ. She fell asleep on the, on the couch, and so I picked her up, and I was carrying her upstairs. To put her to bed, and uh, and she kind of she kind of stirred and kind of woke up in my arms as I was walking up the stairs, and she just looked up at me with like sleepy eyes. She goes, "You're so strong, Daddy," <laughs> and I was like. <laughs> To a three-year-old girl, you probably are really strong. <laughs> Speaking of this, total sidebar. Brad, our camera operator, he was doing handheld to the fight scene the other day. And, you know, it's got that top handle to the camera. So he picked it up, and he was holding it, and he goes like this. <laughs> and, he, and he looked at it with two hands. I'm like, wait, 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 Brad. Curl that. And literally, it was like, he went. And I'm like, ha, let me see that. And so I grabbed it, and I was just like, dude, you need to do a push up. Oh, Brad. I saw somebody this morning doing the Brad, doing the dance. Oh, um, we love you, Brad. Hi. is if Mary hadn't died in the show, um, how different would the boys' lives have been? Like, would they have gotten into hunting, or would that life have just always have found them? Or, or if Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> whose fleece was white as snow. And then, and then, everywhere. Then Mary went... The lamb was sure to go. Uh, <laughs> that's, they probably have better manners. They probably have better hygiene. They, uh, they probably wouldn't be hunters, I guess. So Sam would be a lawyer. Dean would be a stripper. A female stripper, if you would have gotten the operation. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think, and we'll learn this in season 12, that Mary really did uh, try to protect her family from that world that she didn't know. Uh, so that's one of the big things that that she's gonna have to deal with now coming back and seeing her two sons are hunters and live in that life um, because that was the life that she was trying so desperately to protect them from. So I think that if she hadn't died, then she probably would have succeeded in protecting her family from a, a life of hunting. Um, that being said, I think it was inevitable that because She's a hunter, and kind of once a hunter, always a hunter. So the life would have found her again, and would have ultimately found the family. So, yeah, I think that eventually the sons would have had no choice. Or they could have been farmers, and Mary could have had a <laughs> Don't start your question with a, with a potential nursery rhyme. 
I'm just gonna put that out there because uh, Numb Nuts here. Thank you. Hi there. Hi. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you for the last 12 entertaining years. And in those 12 years, you both worked with some really badass females. Some of them are here, like Kim and Brianna and Ruth. And over the years, even um, even though you killed off Charlie. Um, well, we didn't. We did not. <laughs> Talking monkeys, not writers. But what I wanted to ask is, of all the ones you've got to play with over the years, work with, which one did you enjoy working with the most and why? Working with or playing with? <laughs> I think playing with is obvious. Oh, I'm going to go with the one he married for him. Uh, which is the longest prank of all time. Guess what? You're married to me. <laughs> uh, is, is Brianna still backstage? Uh, she is. Brianna. I will say this about Brianna, since A, we just saw her, and B, she's the top of the conversation. She came on as, you know, we've done 244 episodes now because we're three into season 12. She was, she was one of those people and one of those actresses that as soon as we did the first take of her first scene, of her first day, he and I looked at each other and we were like, she's coming back. Winner. Winner. Yeah. We knew instantly in the donut stuff and we were like, she's coming back 100,000%. There are a few actors and actresses that have been on the show that as soon as they're on it, we're Felicia, like, Charlie was supposed to be a one episode character. They only wrote her for one episode and... Kim. Kim. Kim Rhodes. One episode story. Jim. J All right. I think we get the picture. <laughs> Misha. Okay. Now, she was supposed to be on for a while. <laughs> anyway, um, I think it, it's a testament to, to their talent uh, and, um, and their, just their likability and the way that you guys receive them, um, which is why, you know, when people are, and I was one of the, I'm, I'm upset that they, you know, killed Charlie. Of course, you never really did on Supernatural, so, you know. Um, what do you tell us? How? <laughs> Spoiler alert. No, just kidding. Or am I? No, I'm just kidding. Or is it? <laughs> all day. Ace is doing it all day. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so I, I, even though I was upset when, you know, they were like, oh, we're going to kill Charlie, I'm like, no. Uh, you also have to remember that we got her for a lot longer than in, we than they had ever intended anyway. So I think that's that's the positive spin on it. Um, but uh, to pick a favorite, I think, would be very difficult. Um, I think, you know, there have, been, there have been several that have really, really been great to, you know, to, to partner with on the screen. Um, Certainly, the, the females that are here today and, and we're here this weekend, uh, his wife was a joy to work with. Apparently, a, a joy to be with outside of the set, too. Um, <laughs> I'll never forget it. What's that supposed to be? I'll never forget it. <laughs> Jen sitting there reading her book in her cast chair, and I look over, and what's Jared doing? Not kidding. I just walked by and I was like, yep, that's happening. <laughs> she doesn't have a chance. Poor girl. Poor girl. Uh, Lisa Berry. I mean, we've, we've had so many. Uh, Lisa's fantastic. Uh, Elena. God, Ruthie. Ruth. Um, 
huh? Yeah. I think she might be coming back. Oh, okay. Awesome. There's, yeah, there's so many. We've been very fortunate to have the, the talent uh, um, come, through our, come through our doors that we've had. It's been... Uh, we've had a lot of doors. We've had a lot of doors. Yeah. Tough to pick. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank so you. Great, thank you. Cheers. Hi. Hey guys, um, I'm wondering if you can tell us a Sam and Dean story that we Sam haven't Dean. seen on screen yet. Sam and Dean. <laughs> the little fish. Something from the past. <laughs> 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 a little, little leather jacket. <laughs> Sam and Dean. Jared went fishing and caught himself a salmon. And he named it Dean. So he calls him Sam and Dean. <laughs> and somehow the salmon is bow legged. <laughs> Even bow with no legs. Bow fin. Bow fin. <laughs> Sludgy snow, not like Yellowstone. What happened if Mary left? The lamp was sure to go. <laughs> After Mary. So sorry. She said salmon bean. This is the story that you have it because they would never put this on television. <laughs> Twins. Um, she said they were actually better well behaved because they entertained each other versus single children that you had to entertain. Just, you know, just That's sweet of you to lie to them like that. <laughs> they're my older sisters and they're kind of a pain in the ass, just in a second. So just. <laughs> Started out good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on her side, I'm just saying. Um, my question was actually when, if you guys happen to know or actually thought about it, when Chuck brought Kevin out or sent him to heaven or however you want to say it, I kind of assumed that Kevin was already gone. If the came out of the veil or what have you, where's Charlie? Did you ever think about... <laughs> Did she died after him. After he died. Sorry, Mr. Brown. <laughs> Are there any English teachers in the audience? Seriously? English teacher? Don't yes. mess with your kids like you messed with him. What's funny is my dad... Or messed with he. <laughs> my dad, the accountant, was the grammar Nazi. My mom, the English teacher... You have taken that baton and ran with it. Run. Well, you would know more than me. I... <laughs> yeah, so sometimes I'll go, um, I'll say, like, uh, you know, JJ and I. Uh, me. And, no, 
JJ and I. And me. JJ and I. And me. And what about you? <laughs> we'll do it across the table. I'll be like, yeah, uh, sh she went to the store with JJ and I. I'll be like, and me. He's like, no, you weren't at the store. <laughs> I'll say, I'll say, yeah, no, he, he certainly knows better than me. I. No, me. I. Not I. you, me. We're talking about me. Stop making everything about you! Uh. Oh, Jesus. Take it easy! <laughs> You're scaring Jensen and me. <laughs> Gotcha. Aren't you supposed to do your daughter's texts? No, she she does it to mine. She's in the stands with her. Got it. What's up, daughter? I'm just pointing. Okay. What was the question? Again? What was the question? Where's Charlie? Yes. Yes. Charlie is in purgatory helping Benny. <laughs> She's kicking some serious ass. Thanks, Colin. All right. Hi, Jared Jensen. My name's Richard. Hey, Richard. I've been a fan since the beginning. Imagine my surprise when my hometown of Hibbing, Minnesota has been on two episodes. <laughs> graduated in 05, and you do not sound like that. <laughs> That's more like the Canadian version. Well, it's the Canadian playing the part, so... <laughs> I have not. I would love to. How far away is it from here? Three hours. Okay. There's probably not a big uh, airport. You probably just fly here and drive. I'm actually down here now, but yeah. it's a lot like the first episode of Hibbing, but not quite that bad. Yeah, I'm sure. I'd love I to. I don't believe you. I'll check it out myself. One of, one of my little, one of my, one of my personal dreams or hopes, I don't want to call it a dream or a hope because it involves the show ending, but when the show has its true swan song, I would love to go visit some of these cities that we've had in these episodes. I'd love to visit the Midwest. And, yeah. First things, first things first, we gotta make it to Lawrence. Yeah, someone's, someone's dying. Someone, that was a death now. Yeah, thanks, brother. Thanks, Richard. Yeah. You're the first Richard I've ever met that I've enjoyed. <laughs> How's it going, brother? My first con, and I'm here with the two guys that I've been mentoring, actually, for the past ten years. Um, so they affectionately call me Bobby. Nice. <laughs> so, so my question... Are y'all hunters? <laughs> yeah. Uh, one you. of them's single, so he's on the hunt, ladies. <laughs> Gotta say, man, you should like your odds right now. <laughs> I've been telling that all weekend. Okay, my question is... <laughs> Um, being a mentor to now, they were young, now they're young men. Uh, did you guys have any role models or mentors in your early life that really um, helps propel you along in your life? <laughs> yeah, what she said. I, I did, yeah. Um, the obvious is my father. Uh, another is my brother, believe it or not. Um, and then I had a, a high school drama teacher, um, and he. A lot of the schools in our, our uh, city, in our district, in our region, were doing very theatrical, like, here I am to enter. But he was very much, a, I don't want to call him a small-time director, but he, he was a bad stage director. Because he wasn't, you know, if someone's sitting in the very top, he wasn't like, I need you to walk in and say, you, it's time for you to come. Like, he wasn't, he, it was all about, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? Like, just sit there listen and react and i think it really kind of formed my acting style because i'm not a very showy actor i was talking earlier like i don't like doing comedy because i feel like i'm like da -da 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 -da. so I, I, I would rather feel it 
I would rather feel, I would rather take it and let it swim around in my psyche as Sam and then react in kind. So I think uh, he would be another mentor I had at a young age. Um, yeah, I, he and I are both very fortunate that, that our, our dads were very, uh, very present in our lives. And, and um, uh, so that, I, I would say the, the mentorship from our fathers was probably the, the, the most influence. However, there were other, um, there, there were other folks along the way. One that comes to my mind uh, was um, in junior high school, uh, one of my coaches, uh, Coach Malcolm. And this guy was, uh, there was just a, a temperament about him. He taught lessons in a way that, that really stuck with me. Um, think of, he kind of he kind of looked and sounded and acted like Ed Harris uh, to kind of give you a, so he was just, he was, you know, he was a, he was a firm and disciplinarian type of coach. But there was a there was a love in his voice that was that was felt and it was honest and earnest and the way he taught lessons were just they were great and they stuck with me to this day and and he was um, yeah he just had a, a good influence and that was you know that those years in your life in a, in a young man's life the, you know a 14 15 16 year old um, you know you're very impressionable and, and and he I was glad that I had people like him and there were a few others too in my life at that time. Thanks. Thanks. I know you represent a lot of us in this, but over 30 years fighting the fight, I always keep fighting, man. Amen. I always keep fighting. Hi. Y'all are lucky fellows to have a cool mentor like that. Hi. My question is when you guys were filming with Matt Cohen and Jeffrey Dean Morgan, was there a prank ever done with, to you guys or to them? I mean, there was one scene where Jeff, uh, he had been shooting like 12 Grace. hours on Grey's Anatomy. And then he got on a plane and took like an overnight and flew up to Vancouver and then had a full 12 hour day straight, like straight. So he had like, it's like 24 hours of work with about two hours of sleep. And he was just, he was spent. He's probably told you the story. Um, but the scene was the three of us uh, in a room and he had a ton of dialogue. And so they just started like posting his dialogue around the room on like cue cards and, and pieces of paper, anything, anywhere he looked, you know, the ceiling, anywhere. And so Jared and I just took to slapping the things on our foreheads and our things. Like in the middle of the take, we'd just be like, <laughs> there'd be like three words, and then he'd move on and look over at Jared. Jared'd just be holding it in front of us, um, unannounced. You know, he's looking for it on the wall, and he's like, Where did we go? Where? Oh, Jared has it on his face. Um, <laughs> Poor guy. I know. Pretty miserable. Um, but so, yeah, doing anything more than that, pranking him, would have just been unfair at that moment. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, the. I know we kind of get, the, the pranks kind of get talked about every now and again. There's, there's not a whole lot of thought that goes into uh, sabotaging somebody else's take. It just kind of happens organically. With me, Sean. Yeah, he was directing. Yeah. He, he wasn't accurate. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was directing. I mean, that, that deserves a pie in the face. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot of it is just kind of, you know, spur of the moment kind of messing with people and um i'm sure we've done it to I'm sure. almost everybody that's walked through the door there are certain times in me as an actor there are certain people and characters that i kind of have to stay in a certain vibe with and i think anytime matt's been on the show it's been so weird for sam i love matt but it's been so weird for sam that i don't i'm not method by any means but I'm not as silly as, say, with Jensen or Misha or something. Because for Sam to see his father as a young guy is really weird, so I kind of get to a headspace in the morning and kind of keep that headspace, you know? It's not like, you know, if you, if you look at a basketball game or a football game or a baseball game, 
and you see the people who aren't on the field or on the court, they're not playing Pokemon Go. They're still there. They're still watching. They're still staying in the moment. It's not like they're going and, you know, reading a book or having a shower or watching a TV. They're kind of staying. The game's on, you know, from the time they call action on the first scene of the day to the time they call that's a wrap at night. For certain instances and certain scenes, your character is in a weird place, you know? Um, like the, the, I was talking about Sacrifice, but the end of season eight, where it was me and Mark Shepard. I mean, that was three long, miserable days of me in a bad headspace. Um, but I felt like that's what I needed as a person to get Sam to there. Um, meanwhile, I love messing with Mark Shepard, but those days I didn't, you know? So. We do. We don't want him to be too tall. There will be more, there will be. <laughs> Something is in the works right now with somebody, and uh, we're not going to tip it off yet, but y'all will be very excited to hear. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. So I understand you guys have been a little involved with um, the Kings of Khan show that Rob and Richard are doing. Could you tell us what it was like to work with them, and what was it like to be guest stars? I'll never do that again. Yeah, I mean, talk about Bush League. <laughs> Just... Thank you. Next question. Uh, awesome. You start out. I will say, um, I was... I'll watch your six. I was pleasantly surprised at the professionalism that was taking place at that. On totally that, different than supernatural. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, we, we showed up uh, in the afternoon, and, and you know there was it was just it was just a well run production, and um, and it was fun for us because. <laughs> say that they, you know, it, it was fun watching them be so excited about what they were doing in that regard. I'm sweating. Every water bottle he and I drink, that's what happens to it. Um, it becomes a gun. <laughs> it, you know, it, it, seeing Seeing them do, in my opinion, one of the great things, one of the things that they do best is that kind of riffing, that, that, that comedy, that style of, of, of work and play. Um, so for Jared to get, Jared and I to kind of get into that with them and to be able to participate, um, and not just in the green room or backstage, to actually do it and record it and make it about something, I don't, I, I, I really enjoyed it. I wish, uh, uh, I wish we could do more. There's something really cool, and I've experienced it now twice in the last uh, six months. Once was on Gilmore Girls, the Netflix movie. Yeah, it was awesome, I just watched it. The other uh, was on Kings of Khan. And that's being on a set that's not all about me. And you know what I mean? Like, I think it was so relieving for us to go, like, listen, we're the guest stars. This is amazing. Like, we just, as opposed to being the people who need to, like, slam the volleyball, we just set it up, you know? And so it was nice to see Rob and Richard, who are both incredibly talented. I'll never sit up in front of them. <laughs> but incredible and, and smart and funny and talented and, you know, quick as a whip, um, with great wit. It was nice to just sit there and kind of watch them as fellow actors where the show was about them, not about us. Like that was, like I could have done that all day and all night. And it was also nice, I love being part of a set that subscribes to uh, best idea wins. So there was no there was no ego. It wasn't like Rich and Rob came in, they're like, hey, here's what you guys are gonna do and blah blah blah. And if we had an idea, they're like, no, don't like it. They were like, oh cool, that's awesome. Like let's give it a shot. You know, if it doesn't work, great, but if it does, we don't have a lot of time for that in Supernatural because we have, you know, uh, eight days with 
however many pages to try and get it to post-production to try and put on the air a month later. There it was like, hey, do y'all want to try another one? Do y'all want to try this? Do you want to try that? Do you want to do one like this or like that? It was, it was kind of cool. It was very different where, you know, we're in the confines of we have to make this television show day in, day out and all eyes looking at us. It was nice to kind of like, to be a fan of who I was working with. Not that I'm not a fan of Jensen, but usually the eyes are, usually the cameras are on us, you know? And when I say, <laughs> when I say me, I mean, I mean us. Like the cameras are always on me. <laughs> you smell funny. <laughs> That's all I got. It was great, it was great. I'd like to do it again. <laughs> That was just something. I hear something, Jerry. I'll not see anything. Thanks, bro. Good job. Oh, hey. Hey. Good job. Hey. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. That's nice. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Uh, Plenty more good. where that came from. I appreciate that. Keep it up. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the kings of calm. Uh, as you were. All right, good. This will go towards our, our next bocce bribing. <laughs> Here to the left. It wasn't, it was a different Rich and Rob we were talking about, but I'll tag it. <laughs> it's back out. I just blew 20 bucks. Are you just, are you just doing laps? <laughs> <laughs> trying, to, trying to stay warm? <laughs> stay in the pocket? <laughs> stay warm, yeah. Do we have time? Yeah, um, yeah, have that. We're, oh, we're nice. just, yeah. We just heard our name and came we're out. Just fans. I would like to be a new character. I would like, I would like a brand new character uh, who shows up and um, he's got a past we don't entirely know about, but he seems to be really good at what he does. He's got floppy hair. <laughs> he's tall. His last name is Remington. Smith and Wesson. You know who we you know who we'd like to play on Walking Dead? Sam and Dean Winchester. <laughs> yeah, we'd end that show real quick and we'd end Vampire Dogs, which <laughs> think of a better reason to use the grenade launcher than a bunch of zombies. <laughs> I will say this, in the first five episodes of Supernatural Season 12, the grenade launcher makes an appearance. <laughs> Finally. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, what was uh, your first reaction? Jensen, it's a question about you, so relax. <laughs> <laughs> where are you from? Fine. Uh, okay, yeah, she yeah. yeah, she told you in the photos. <laughs> she's a shadow right now. I don't see anything. No, she's not. She's a person. <laughs> I only, I she's only feelings. See, I only see movement. I remember I'm you. I'm a tyrannosaurus right now. Thank you, Jensen. If you stand really still, I won't see you. But yes, I can, I can see you here. <laughs> What was your first reaction about the Echo Twins? Yeah. The Echo Twins. Twins. Apples Twins. Oh, the Apples Twins. <laughs> no, no, the Echo Threes. <laughs> My first reaction about the, about the Echo Threes? <laughs> Let me make something up real quick. Uh, <laughs> it's a very multi-layered question. Um, so he and I and our wives are all very close. We see each other on a regular basis, whether we're shooting or not. And when I found out 
I think my first instinct was to like pour him a stiff drink <laughs> and go like, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> uh, no, I couldn't, I, could, I couldn't be more thrilled for him. Uh, he went into the, 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 went into the kitchen uh, where Jen was and said, uh, hey, honey, um, did you hear the news? The Eagles? Yeah, they just caught up and passed us. With <laughs> Get to the bedroom. And then he said, get in the bedroom. It's a true story. I can't let him beat me. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled for him. Uh, I'm, uh, Duane's going to have better parents, and Tom and Chef are going to have two new friends. So uh, I'm happy for uh, yeah, very awesome. Very awesome. Thank you so much. St. Paul, the surrounding areas. We love you guys. Thank y'all so, so much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys for the Jelly Cravalucky Tucson Echoes. <laughs> 